In this exercise, we're going to get you to make some measurements on a standing wave on a piece of string. One of the reasons for doing this is so you actually see a physical standing wave because a bit later on in the subject, when we start introducing ideas in quantum theory, we are going to want to understand the concept of a standing wave. Now what I have here is a function generator and a vibration generator. The function generator can just generate a voltage and a current at any particular frequency I, I wish to dial up. The vibration generator is basically just a coil out of the back of a loudspeaker attached to a shaft. And so I will turn up the voltage on the function generator to get the vibration generator going. And the vibration generator is now going and it's sending out some waves down that piece of string. And let's now pan and look along the piece of string so that we can see both ends. At the far end I have a pulley. Over the pulley I have some masses to provide tension in the piece of string. Now I've tuned this so it's pretty close to the first harmonic which isn't particularly interesting because it means there's just a node at the far end, a node very near this end, and a maximum vibration in the middle. Usually when you pluck a string on an instrument, this is the mode you'll induce. But what I'm now going to do is I will about double the frequency on the uh, function generator and see what effect that has. Now we've gone to about 12.6 hertz, which is very close to the second harmonic. Now what you may be able to notice as you look down the piece of string is there's a point at about the middle where there appears to be no amplitude of vibration at all. That's called a node. And basically what we've got going on here now is the vibration generator is sending a wave travelling down the piece of string. It's reflecting off at the part far end and coming back. And halfway along, the wave coming back is always out of phase with the wave going down the piece of string. And that's why we get a node there. So at this second harmonic, in fact, we can begin to see the wavelength. The wavelength here is the full length of the piece of string. And so there'll be a node fairly close to the vibration generator, the first half of the wave down to the node in the middle, and the second half of the wave to the far end. Let's go up in frequency a bit more. Let's double the frequency again and see what it looks like. I've gone up to about 25.5 hertz now and as you look down the piece of string you may be able to notice that there is a region of anti-node where the amplitude is biggest then there we come to a node then another anti-node then a node then another anti-node then a node and so on and now we appear to have one uh, a half wavelength is the distance between any two nodes. So we appear to have one half wavelength, two half wavelengths, three half wavelengths, four half wavelengths down the string. And so this is about the fourth harmonic of uh, this uh, standing wave. So remember that our fundamental was at about six and a bit hertz, about 6.1, 6.2 hertz. We've now gone up to 25.5 hertz. It's not exact multiples here because the first node is just near the vibration generator and I actually have to tune it to get uh, to an exact uh, standing wave. So there are lots of different possible standing waves. Now your task in this exercise, or your task in this exercise, is to measure the 
distance between adjacent nodes or several adjacent nodes and calculate the wavelength of this wave. Now remember, the distance between any two adjacent nodes is half a wavelength. To get a better idea of the full wavelength, measure the distance between two or three or four nodes and then divide by the appropriate number of half wavelengths between them. So you need to work out what the wavelength of this wave is. You can read the frequency of the, the function generator and calculate the velocity of the wave on this piece of string. And we can go to even higher frequencies if we wish. Let's try the, uh, heart to find the harmonic at about the fifth harmonic at about 30 something hertz. Hopefully we can now see along there, we've reached approximately the fifth harmonic. With a bit of tuning up and down to get the amplitude of that wave the maximum, we can be fairly confident we're on the fifth harmonic. The frequency has increased, the wavelength has decreased. But if we still measure the frequency and the wavelength, multiply them together to get the velocity, we should get the same velocity each time.